5. Outlines of Special Topics Part 5 Helpful Books for Bible Study 5. Outlines of Special Topics It will be remembered that in the chapter on Dispensational Truth, we suggested it would be better for the student to have some useful book of outlines of prophetic truth as a guide. We will now mention a few of these, beginning with the simpler. Many of these are in pamphlet form and quite small, but it would be well if those who have not had and read them should secure them as of special value in their study. 1. The Lord's Coming, by C. Stanley this is among the first published on prophetic subjects, which have since multiplied so largely. It contains the simplest of diagrams, which yet in an unmistakable way conveys scripture truth. It is said that Mr. Stanley first drew this diagram on a barn door with a piece of chalk, to illustrate the great dispensational truths to his simple country hearers. We can only say it would be well if all preachers and teachers grasped this simple outline and grouped their knowledge of Scripture truth according to its teaching. What God hath said on the second coming of Christ, and on the, the millennium, by the same author, are full of references to Scripture. Caught up with the bridegroom and coming with the king, changed in a moment, and, he cometh with clouds, papers on the Lord's coming, by C. H. M., the mystery and the kingdom of heaven with accompanying chart, are all of them pamphlets, small and large, which can be procured for a few pennies, and will illumine the whole subject of dispensational truth. Of larger works, we mention. Eight Lectures on Prophecy, by Trotter, Plain Papers on Prophetic and Other. Subjects, by the same. The first is a simple and valuable statement for beginners, the second goes into the subject at length and is a most valuable compendium of dispensational truth, perhaps the best work on prophecy. Here, the great epochs of Scripture and the great prophetic questions are treated in a clear, reverent and practical way. We can cordially commend this valuable work. The Lord's Coming, Israel and the Church, by T. B. Baines, is another valuable dispensational work with the special merit of great simplicity and clearness of style. It is perhaps more readable than the previous book, though not so full in its treatment of prophetic subjects. Other excellent books on dispensational truth will be mentioned in a supplementary list but need not be specially characterized here. We add, however, The Lessons of the Ages, by F. W. Grant, a very clear and helpful characterization of each dispensation of Scripture, with the lessons to be learned from all. No one should fail to study this valuable book of only 125 pages. Before closing this part of our subject, we notice a very helpful, chart on the course of time, by A. E. Booth, with notes to the same, called, A Key. This chart, based upon the typical interpretation of the seven days of creation in their application to the dispensations, is an interesting and helpful work. It puts clearly before the eye, in a semi-pictorial way, the great epochs and dispensations of Scripture, showing how each day of creation was typical of a day in the great progressive march of events. Thus, the first day with the light is typical of the first age when the light of God's promise shone upon the troubled seas of humanity from Adam to Noah. The second day, in like manner, with the firmament above the earth, suggests the period of human government when the authority of the heavens was first felt in the government of the world. The third day, the emergence of the dry land, is the age of Israel's history as a nation from the call of Abraham to Christ, where in the sea of the world's nations, Israel arises as the great central continent where God manifested His ways. The fourth epoch is that of the Church, the dispensation in which we are living, when the sun, the light above the sun, for us shines in the heavens. The fifth day is the period of the fruitfulness of the waters, suggesting that great tribulation out of which emerges blessing for the earth. This blessing is described in the Sixth day, the millennial period where the man with the woman, typical of Christ and the Church, is given authority over all the earth. The seventh day is the Sabbath, 
the eternal rest of God where sin can never enter to blight his new creation. This, with very many interesting details, is given in the chart and accompanying key.